Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Uh, we got a great show here for you today. We got Andrew Hines back. We're going to be talking Canadian real estate market all day, every day. Some of our predictions, where we've been, where we're going. And yeah, let's get into it. Welcome back. Welcome back, Andrew. Thanks for having me back, Mark. It's always a pleasure. How, how's sunny Florida? It's not sunny today, but uh, <laughs> we've been spoiled. It's been sunny most days. So yeah, I can't complain. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, let, let's get into it. Here's the April stat. Yeah. March stats, actually. Home sales are up 5.2% month over month. It was a record listing month again. So February was a record listing month. March was a, another record listing month. You know, again, it was a record sales month again in, in March. Obviously, you can see where the sales gains were largest, Greater Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Hamilton, Burlington, Ottawa. Uh, anecdotally, uh, Calgary and Edmonton, I was in bidding wars on at least five properties out there. Yeah, it's really it's really starting to pick up uh, in Alberta. Like their their market's going crazy. I, I, I make one video, <laughs> one video, I make one video and then look, yeah. it's gone. Like it's like, I wish I had that yeah. kind of power. The cat's out of the bag in, in Alberta. It's just like you pointed out, like oil's kind of coming back a little bit. And uh, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about, about Alberta. And plus just the price point compared to so many other markets, it's very affordable. Well, I mean, I did buy an apartment building out there for less than $90,000 a door, right? And there's been a couple other I've, I've, I've kind of bid on, I haven't got, and I, I lost out on a bidding war on a vacation rental in Canmore. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a good time to, uh, to own anywhere, but anyone trying to buy right now, it's, uh, it's certainly, uh, it can be frustrating. So 70, almost 76, just a bit over 76,000 residential properties traded hands on MLS. So that's not even off MLS wholesalers, private deals, that type of thing. 14,000 more sales than the previous record set last July. So this is the busiest month ever. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were expecting, Mark? Well, so we all we all knew the supp- the demand was there, right? Um, and the supply was the issue. So, uh, February we started to see the supply increase, and this this month we saw a lot more on the market. So, this is a typical that typically happens in the spring, and yet now we have you know some places coming out of shutdowns, um, some places have gone back in, but not in March, right? Uh, so they, we were a lot more open at that time. Um, so that might have led people to be more comfortable putting their properties on the market and that were holding off, you know, and some people just say, want to sell into the spring market because they want to close after the kids school, even though everything's going to be online. So who knows? There was just a heck of a lot more sellers and some of it could just be taking advantage of pricing. I have friends who have taken advantage of some pricing and they have, um, they sold in Ontario and they've went to Alberta. Uh, or they've gone somewhere else, they've gone out east or smaller municipalities. Um, So, I mean, that's happening. It's just a matter of, is it going to keep going? Yeah, it's like, well, there's a couple of questions, right? How many employers are going to let their employees work remotely? Because I know there are obviously people that want to take advantage of that pricing. Like, why not move out east or move out west and take, you know, where your dollar can go so much further. But I know you and I have both noticed this. We've been talking to people and kind of seeing there's less, the bidding wars are less intense right in the core, right in Toronto and in Hamilton. And I personally, I think you and I were both on the same page. We expected that to happen eventually because there's only so high prices can go before people would just say, this doesn't make sense anymore. Well, they say I can't afford it, right? Because again, they look at it as, well, what can I afford every month? Mm -hmm. What will the bank give me based on the affordability of my mortgage payment every month? Right. And obviously that's going down because the mortgage stress test that's coming in. Yeah. What are we figuring uh, June 1st for that one? June 1st, July 1st. They haven't officially announced it yet. Yeah. So but I think June 1st, so, and that's going to knock 4% off what people can buy. It's going to it's going to affect people who are taking financing. A lot of the foreign buyers aren't, aren't necessarily taking financing. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how much of a, an effect that has. But I think that certainly will will cut a large portion of, of normal Canadian buyers uh, back in terms of what they can afford. And to be honest with you, it, at least in the markets I'm in right now, I'm not seeing that large foreign no contingent although immigration is was record for the first quarter of 2021 like the express pass the economic express pass they i think they gave out like 53,000 invitations to that yeah so it's kind of a it's kind of a bad combo right like you got 
a supply crunch right now. We don't have enough. And, uh, and then of course we've got more people trying, uh, coming in. So, uh, it's exasperating this problem a little bit compared with those low interest rates. So yes and the, no. I mean, yeah. I'm just going to kind of disagree just on the simple fact that I think most of the people who are going to come in are going to make move to major metropolitan areas. And other mm-hmm. than say the outlying areas of Durham, Halton, Hamilton, mm-hmm. Um, even in like Alberta and, and Montreal, the downtown core hasn't seen that huge run up in prices, right? And yeah. they're going to move to Toronto. They're going to move to Edmonton. They're going to mm-hmm. move to Calgary. They're going to move to Montreal, uh, Vancouver. Uh, and they just haven't seen the run up in prices that these other areas have seen. Yet. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think that people are starting to come back to the to the core areas as well too. I think condos, they're, they're starting to do a lot stronger. Um, yep. My take on that would be, Condos are just looking a lot more affordable as a place to live as all these outskirt properties, all these, um, these tertiary and secondary markets start really booming. People are coming back to the city saying, Hey, you know what? The value is just not there as much as it was if I go far away from the city. And I mean, the stats are proving it. Um, Mm -hmm. yet we are seeing the number of sales in metropolitan areas starting to increase, Mm -hmm. uh, Toronto, Toronto, again, like you said, like we're getting bidding wars on condos again. Um, you know, we sold a six unit property in High Park area and there was tremendous interest on that where we sold a fourplex a couple of months ago before Christmas and there there wasn't as much interest. So we're starting to see that come back as well. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, I was, I was having some conversations with other investors recently and just the conversation about what's going to happen when people, you know, they don't want to go far away from the city, they want to stay the the move towards getting smaller and smaller i think we're going to start to see more like uh you know family with their brother-in-law moving in family with their cousin moving in um we're going to see a lot more people packing into units to kind of split that cost so we can continue to see rents rise to accommodate these higher prices well 100 i mean well here's the thing like what we know is that real estate in canada is typically a supply issue and you know a lot of that restraint is just policy um and you know that policy basically says that you know well it's going to take you four or five years to put up a project and it's going to be costly right with development charges taxes that type of thing so Mm -hmm. you know it's it's just going to slow down and you know so you're going to be the demand the supply won't meet up with demand until four or five years and that's that's demand today that's not four to five years from now demand Right. right Which, if we're going to add how many people through immigration a year, then, ha- I mean, what's that going to do? Well, yeah, that's that's the thing, right? So many people are asking, is this a bubble? And, and how would we know? And, and the, the key question is, will there come a point where if something were to happen, where people would just say, I'm not buying housing, even if they need it? And that's where that effect of people moving in with family may allow for a correction. I, you know, we're all trying to guess here. Is there a correction coming or is there a stagnation coming? Um, I think a stagnation uh, almost certainly. I'm just going to say back in 2015, Mm -hmm. um, we had a huge run up in prices. Same thing. They did the mortgage stress test then it slowed down the market. I was sitting there talking with the, with one of the economists from CMHC. And he basically said, well, in the next five years, 1 million people are going to move into Toronto where are they going to live? Yeah. Right. And it's they like, go somewhere. Well, you, 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 yeah. I mean, they got to go somewhere and, and you just look at it from that standpoint. It, okay. Well, yeah. Where are they going to live? Right. We're not building enough housing. Um, it's just not happening. And you know how, like we just need densification. And again, that's not yeah. happening at, at a great enough pace. So there's going to be a supply crunch and yeah. Can we continue to go up at 30 to 40% per year? I mean, I doubt it. I, I don't, I don't see that, but I don't, I don't know what the catalyst is that's going to cause this to, to fall off the cliff. Is it 5% interest rates? I don't see that happening. Unless, unless one day they just say, Hey, inflation's out, out of control, which I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons to expect that that would come. And well, they, despite I, the, despite the notion, they said they're not going to increase rates what you know is there that conversation that our hands been forced we have to here's the thing like the government they well they just announced the um the 
they're not going to, they're not, their deficit's not going to be more than $400 billion this year, right? Like that, that's, that's their stated goal. And I'm just like, I sit there and say, wow, that's, that's, that's a really big number. And the only way they're going to get out of that is to inflate their way out, right? Because they inflate their way out, they increase GDP faster because they're of inflation and they pay less. And because they've already come out and said they can't tax us more on capital gains, right? That's not, that's a no go because you'll lose tech jobs because that's how they pay a lot of their employees through stock options, right? You know, they, they, they're they going to sit there and they're going to inflate and that that's just a tax, right? It's a tax on savers. It is a tax. So, so what do you do? You know, that's the key question because I think a lot of people are waiting on the sidelines right now. I've spoken with so many people who are sitting on cash, large, large amounts of it, and they want to get into this market, but they don't want to buy into negative cash flow. So this is from the investor side. Um, you, you know, what, what do you do to protect your wealth? Like, what, you know, someone like yourself, what would you, what would you kind of think is the best strategy for that? I mean, so obviously I'm going to Alberta. Uh, I'm still looking in Ontario. There's still deals. I mean, mm -hmm. for a friend of mine just bought 200 units, right? Um, there, there's still deals out there. So I'm still looking for deals. Um, I, I mean, if you sit on the mark sidelines too long, then everything will pass you by. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, I'm, a lot of my money goes into the stock markets, into just good stocks that I don't mind holding forever that pays dividends and I can just write calls on mm -hmm. them. And it's just an income play for me. And I, like, I don't need to make like, and these guys are like sitting on these big piles of money. They don't need to make 100% a year. You know, a lot of times yeah. they're happy with 10 to 15% and just stay safe instead, which you so can you do in this market. You definitely can. I, I mean, part of me really wants to have some cash available for if there is a correction, you know, I don't want to put it all in now. Um, but I, I, I much like you, you know, I'm looking at other markets, where can I make the money work now? It's funny, though, down here, even in Florida, like, it's going crazy. It's more like 2017 crazy, like it's early in the craziness, whereas we're mm -hmm. five years into the craziness. Uh, but it's, uh, it's happening here, too. Well, that's what I feel in Edmonton right now, or, or Calgary, or I mean, Canmore, again, I so I, I was in a bidding war. There's three offers, $895,000 town or condo, three bedroom condo. I was at $920,000 firm. And my agent was like, oh yeah, you got this. No problem. Like there's three offers, right? And it sold for 970 firm. Wow. I was just like, okay. Yeah. And, and it's kind of what's happening here too, right? Like there was an um, offer presentation on the weekend in a townhouse here in Oakville, you know, it was listed for 699. One offer came in at 700, one came in at 740 and it sold for 780. How did it sell? You mean, so there's a third offer for 780? Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a blind bidding process. You don't know. Right. Yeah. And then there's the argument for, should we take it public and, and have public auctions? And it's like, well, I think like I would have probably paid more for that condo if I was in an auction. Yeah. This like is actually just a discussion. Cheap enough. People are going to do that. Well, that's what they're talking about. I mean, it's out yeah. there, right? People say that on the boards and stuff like that, like have a public auction. I'm just like, I don't know yeah. that it's going to decrease pricing any. Like yeah, you're going to get, you're going to get some deals so. one off here and there, but I think it might even raise prices more. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to the emotional, you know, people in the moment with no, no ability to think about it. Oh, just keep going, keep going. We can get it. Yeah. Well, what's <laughs> another 10,000? Oh, yeah, exactly. What's another 10,000? Yeah. Okay. I think that would backfire huge. Yeah, that, that's better for the sellers, for sure. I think so. But, all right. Well, so uh, we, we want to look at any of these specific markets, um, like Hamilton, I was just just looking at that. I mean, it did have a little bit of a dip, but uh, it's it's way up this month. So look, there's Hamilton. I mean, so 32 and a half percent. Yeah, that number's uh, year over that's year. year, though, right? over year Last yeah. March was was a was a bit of a trough, right? Because it uh, things. Oh, dropped. that's true, too. Yeah. So it's a little but deceiving. It's, but it's a little, um, yeah. All right. Yeah. So just kind of looking at this, you can see the, uh, the average sold price. We had a, you know, just a little bit of a dip last month, but it's, it's also way up for March, which is your spring market, right? Like, just like what we would expect to see, um, you know, big thing, just looking at condos overall year over year up 30%. I mean, everything's a little deceiving when you, when you compare it to last March, when everything kind of troughed a little bit, but, yeah. uh, but it's you can just, even see like three months ago compared yeah. to yeah you can see what's happening here um it, we were in a hot market all around so again like we're, we're kind of dealing with something we don't have a lot of precedent for because we haven't really ever had such a hot winter in terms of sales and now it's just exasperating with the spring market 
So, to be honest uh, with you, like I've been in those markets before where in January I have tons of buyers and there's just nothing to sell them. Mm -hmm. And so there are like bidding wars yeah. on, on things because again, there's buyers out there, but everybody gets yeah. into this mentality of, oh, we, we got to sell into the spring market. Right. Yeah. They want to wait. Right. So inventory is spiking, right? Like it was coming down and down and down. And then all of a sudden now it's shooting back up. So a lot of people are obviously thinking spring's the time to list. And yeah, I mean, sales are right there with it. Nationally, like there's 1.7 months of inventory and, and, and yeah. like normal is like 5.4 months of inventory. So if nobody yeah. listed anything for the next one and a half months, then there'd be, be nothing, nothing, left. nothing, nothing left, left at this rate. It's, it's hard, hard to imagine that, right? We want to want to keep Canadians in housing, right? We, you know, and that's just, it's going to wow. make it a lot harder. I, for us, I so. mean, again, the government is incentivized to do that, right? Like it's the, the taxes that are made on a house, like from land transfer tax in Ontario to HST, GST on services, plus when somebody buys a cap, well, that's on investors selling, you know, on the residential side, they're like, Somebody buys a house and they, I don't remember what the econo the number is, but they go ahead and they add another twenty to $40,000 in economic activity, right? So, I mean, that's driving a lot of what's keeping the economy going right now. Absolutely. Well, yeah, just just to the, to the point of, of days on market there, I'm just looking at this graph for Hamilton. You can see what a difference from, from March 2020. Yeah. With 49 and, and days to 10 days. I'll link the video where I said, yeah. guys, yeah. now it's time to buy last year i mean yeah well hey you were right you 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 always say best time to buy was 20 years ago and the second best is today right yeah yeah it's just a matter of where and when and how yeah exactly so what do you what are you hot on right now what market's still alberta is that still your your main focus i'm looking in alberta for sure um i again i've put five offers in the last week mm -hmm. um there um i don't know maybe i'm gonna have to get more aggressive because I, I haven't bought anything else other than the first one yeah. Uh, and I guess, oh, I can release who I bought that off now. I bought it off Don Campbell. Don Did R. You? Campbell, the, the godfather of Canadian real estate. And now because I bought his building, he has to come on the channel. Oh, nice. Yeah, you worked that yeah. out with him, huh? I worked that out. I put that in the agreement. It was one of the conditions of sale. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Well, I'll look forward to that episode. I mean, anything else we need to cover before we jump off? I mean, I, I don't know. Like this market yeah. is still, obviously, it's it's a, it's a demand driven. Well, yeah, it's a, it's lack of supply, right? We've, we've got our demand there. I mean, that's not changing. And I think the, the key thing here, and I know we've, we've tried to mix up these discussions because we don't we won't we'll just want to focus like on the things record, that the, yeah. the fact that things are growing because they're growing. It's quite obvious. Um, you know, sales prices, sales. Um, we 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 do have inventory. Um, like listings are are very high uh, right now, but well, but, and I but they're I guess getting the, scooped up fast. The one thing to say is that yeah. we kind of need this much inventory coming on the market for the next yeah. two three months to really slow down the market because yeah, to slow it down. It, yeah, it's it's not providing enough. It's like liquidity yeah. in the market. There's not enough that it's, mm -hmm. I mean, so the housing went from 1.5 months to 1.7. Really, right. we need three to six months of this much inventory coming on the market to be saying, okay, we're getting back to a little bit more of a balanced market nationally, at least, right? Yeah. Whereas you're going to have different pockets that are not balanced. Some are going to be in buyers. Some are going to be in sellers. Like, heck, you can still go to Fort McMurray and buy for less than you bought last year. Yeah, there's there's still opportunity, like you said, and I think as an investor, I I would really love it for that market to balance out and give rents a chance to catch up, so that uh, cash flow can start making sense in Ontario again. That would be awesome. Yeah, or or just saw everyone go to Alberta, and which seems yeah. like everyone's doing anyways. And apparently, rents are going up there. That's what I'm watching. So, oh yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna make some good cash flow on that one you just bought. Well, it's funny. Maybe I'll be one of the Ontario investors I know that actually makes money in Alberta and uh, doesn't lose money. <laughs> yeah, I, su I suspect so. Time will tell. Thanks, Andrew. Always a pleasure to have you on. Love chatting with you about this stuff, bud. Enjoy Florida. Um, don't come back. We're locked down. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. It's always fun.